Walter Lippmann. It was a Kannad. Walter Lippmann said, a nation has security when it does not have to sacrifice its legitimate interests to avoid war and is able, if challenged, challenged to maintain them by war. Looking at geopolitics from this prism, do we feel that the previous government was overly pacifist? And is the current government moving towards militaristic nationalism? And if, it is, if this is true, then what will be the advantage of this change in geopolitic orientation? And what will be the cost, if any? That's a very large question, but uh, just to uh, sort of get things moving and the discussion going, um, I'm not so sure that uh, Mr. Modi's foreign policy generally and his approach to international affairs is militaristic nationalism. I don't think so. Um, even if it were, I don't think the country is in a position right now anyway to afford it. Um, but that said, I think we need nevertheless to be aware that with our, all the endowments and attributes for great power, India hasn't made it in the last 70 odd years. We are still, in a very real sense, a marginal power uh, to the extent that uh, anybody considers India a player on the world scene. It is as a regional power of some slight consequence, uh, but without the real muscle to do much harm to anybody. And it's precisely the harm aspect that one needs to um, emphasize, because whether anybody likes it or not, the capacity for mischief, the capacity for disruption, is in some sense the metric for judging how, you know, a judge and a player um, and I don't mean to be uh, simplistic about it, but consider this. Um, India has always wanted to be loved and respected. And one of the problems with that is uh, that that's not how, that's not the standard used by most states. People are different. They might laud India for its approach and outlook. But by and large, I think um, in the world of hard-headed thinking, um, <clears throat> the fact is it's better to be feared than respected. And it is fear that I think has always failed to inspire given our own kind of advertisements of ourselves as a Pacific nation, as Gandhian and so on. Much of it is hokum. I mean, we are no more Gandhian and nonviolent um, than, and, and in many ways perhaps we are perhaps the most violent society in the world, as any uh, glance at any daily paper would suggest. So one of the things is we have, believed, we have started believing the advertisement about ourselves. It's one thing to have advertised ourselves as something, quite another thing to believe our own advertisements about ourselves. And that, I think, is a great liability. The simple point to make, I think, is that India has been far too collaborative. Um, has always sought to be part of a club. Uh, we always want to join somebody. Um, and that has been, as I say, my failing. I believe in realpolitik, hard realpolitik. And in some sense, uh, that's the, the approach I take and have always taken. And I'm not much taken up by uh, the notion of soft power and so on. If you look at history, um, soft power has invariably buttressed hard power. It's not the other way around. You have to have hard power first. It's because America has a globe girdling fleet and now a military presence that, say, Hollywood has its impact. It's not because Hollywood produces John Wayne films that U.S. is great. You get the point. So in our sense, in, in our case, we try to make it the other way around, that we have Shah Rukh Khan and Bollywood, and we have great classical music, and lately Khichdi festivals and so on. Um, this is not going to help us become a great power. 
great for ultimately is the ultimate reckoning, uh, whether you can keep your end up in terms of very hard power, whether you can hurt other nations. And that I'm sorry to say, I don't want to sound bloody minded about it, but in a system of sovereign states, that's the metric that's invariably used. And that's where I think we have failed. I agree with you. In fact, though I have high regard for Gandhi, when he says that be the change you wish to be in the world, I am reminded of another saying, which says the sheep can take out as many resolutions in favor of vegetarianism, but till the wolf remains of a different opinion, non-vegetarianism will prevail in the country or in, in, in the jungle. The second point which I thought was that, um, again from the animal world, I am reminded of that if you think that the world will treat you fairly just because you are a good nation, it is like thinking that the bull will not attack you because you are a vegetarian. I fully endorse your point, but wish, wish to bring in another point from it. That even the most well-behaved and gentle of dogs have to snarl occasionally to maintain peace which is the point which Bharat is making very well, beautifully made. I would like to ask you, in Doklam, did we snarl too long, 70 days, and did we snarl in the public view of others who were watching the embarrassment of the dragon? And will it have some consequences? Do I agree with 100% with what uh, Bharat is saying, but I'm just asking you, will it, can it have some, some consequences in the times to come? Um, well, I think I'll put it into, I'll, I'll make it clear as a Bengali, I'm by definition non-vegetarian. Um, uh, the, the thing that I would say uh, is that when it comes to China, um, India walks a careful path, because as the Chinese will always tell you, we are five times your size. And if there is any country in the world that practices real politic and virtually without any interest in any other aspect of, of international relations, it's the Chinese. Um, and so we have always, I think when I've, when I've, over the years when I've dealt with governments and, and uh, our senior most diplomats or even military men, they've always been careful of the fact or recognizing of the fact that China is in a position to inflict damage on India that at present India is not able to counter, um, except at the highest level, which would be at the, at the nuclear point. Um, so we've tended to walk back and forth when it comes to the Chinese, um, partly because of the memories of 1962, which I think still, in uh, many ways, defined our military strategy in a very defensive posture, um, arguably until very recently. Um, and second, in the recent, in recent times, when we see the enormous expansion of Chinese economic capacity, and now increasingly that's feeding into a, a military and diplomatic uh, capacity as well, um, that India has, uh, can to some degree beard the dragon in its cave, but after a certain point, there's always a sense within the Indian system that we can't push this too far. Um, but having said that, what is also, I think, important to recognize with the Chinese is 